1960s and 70s TV actor Ken Berry has died. Ken Berry, the multi-talented American actor, comedian, and singer, captivated audiences with his charm and wit. With a career that spanned decades, Berry's presence on screen left an indelible mark on fans and viewers alike. But we would like for you people in the audience to know him and remember him as Ken Berry and Captain You are on. Come on. But behind the glitz and glamour of fame, tragedy lurked, adding layers of complexity to his journey. What hidden talents did Barry possess that endeared him to audiences across generations? How did his comedic timing and dancing abilities set him apart from his peers? Join us as we unravel the tragic death of Ken Barry and his children who died before him. Humble Beginnings Barry, a young boy with Swedish and English roots, was born in Moline, Illinois, in 1933. He was a little spark of ability. Barry found his rhythm in the steady beat of his dad's accounting books and the soft hum of his mom's music. When he was only 12, he was mesmerized by the fluid moves of a children's dance show. This made him want to dance and sing so badly. In Barry's dreams, Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly, his movie stars, would light up the screen in hits like Easter Parade and Royal Wedding. Barry's dreams were like a dimly lit movie theater. Barry took tap dance classes because he loved the dance and his feet started to speak for themselves. He won a neighborhood talent contest when he was 15 years old, which caught the attention of Horace Height, a master of big band tunes. As soon as Barry gave a nod of approval, he was pulled up in the Horace Height Youth Opportunity Program, which would take him all over the United States and Europe. There were cheers and whispers from people who had been in the war, and Barry's star rose, shining on the stages of Air Force stations and beyond. In the clamor of heels and praise, ties were made, friendships grew, and dreams took flight with like-minded people like Horace Jr. Each note is a testament to the lasting memory of a Moline boy who dared to dream. Service to the Nation Barry joined the Army at age 18 as a civilian after high school and was sent to Fort Bragg in Fayetteville, North Carolina. His first year in the Army was spent in the artillery, where he joined a post-talent contest. The winner would go on Arlene Francis's Soldier Parade in New York City. Barry, who always carried his tap shoes with him, worked out a routine and a few hours later won the event. He went to New York for his broadcast launch. Barry's second and final year in the Army was with Special Services, under Sergeant Leonard Nimoy, who urged Barry to go to Hollywood and pursue acting. As a part of Special Services, he toured Army bases and officers' clubs entertaining the troops, as well as touring schools for recruiting reasons. Soon, another talent competition was held, the All-Army Talent Competition, looking to find service people to appear on Ed Sullivan's Toast of the Town. Barry came third in the Specialty Act category with the song There'll Be Some Changes Made and returned to New York City in television. Up-and-coming actor. As Barry's time in the Army neared its end, a key chance awaited him on the stage of Sullivan's show. With the future beckoning, Nimoy's telegrams floated like messengers, calling upon studios and agencies to observe Barry's moment in the sun. From that fateful performance came a road filled with potential, sending Barry into the welcome arms of 20th Century Fox and Universal Studios. Hollywood welcomed him eagerly, and with pen to paper, Barry started on a journey of silver screen fame. Though the part of Francis the Talking Mule slipped through his fingers as after two years they let him go. Barry's time at Universal proved to be a springboard for growth and exploration. Beneath the studio lights, he honed his skill, taking every chance for artistic evolution. What began as a dalliance between song and dance grew into a full-fledged love affair with the art of acting, a passion that would define his course. From the glittering draw of musical comedy to the heartbreaking drama of television tales, Barry's range thrived, each part a testament to his flexibility and commitment. Whether he was fighting with Tony Randall and Janet Leigh, or walking the boards with Ava Gabor and Werner Klemperer, Barry's star shone strongly across the film landscape. And in the wonderful world of Disney, his charm grabbed hearts anew, leaving a lasting mark on viewers alongside the likes of Helen Hayes and Sandy Duncan. 
Through success and change, Barry's journey defined the spirit of Hollywood's golden age, an ode to the lasting magic of dreams achieved on the silver screen. A step closer to the big break. In the glitz and glitter of 1950s Las Vegas, Barry's journey took a surprising turn as the bright lights of the strip called with promises of fame. Venturing into the heart of the entertainment city, he found himself rubbing hands with legends Abbott and Costello, sharing the stage in a rush of sketches and song and dance routines. It was a baptism by fire, a crash course in showbiz magic that left Barry spellbound and hungry for more. Amidst the razzle-dazzle of the Sahara Hotel and Casino, fate acted once more as he crossed paths with D. Arlen, a brilliant performer whose impact would prove to be his guiding light. With her hand in his, Barry stepped into the sunlight, his first taste of the Las Vegas glare sparking a love that would burn bright for years to come. But the stage was not done with Barry yet, for fate had another card up its sleeve. In 1957, the call of the footlights took him to the steps of theater star Ken Murray, a master of variety extravaganzas. From the shadows of the Riviera Hotel and Casino came the Ken Murray Blackouts, a show of laughter and spectacle that drew people like moths to a flame. In the middle of the chaos, Barry found himself at the center, choreographing and controlling the stage with an energy that thrilled the room. The blackout moved its run to Los Angeles, where its popularity expanded. Yet like a boomerang pulled by the pull of fate, Barry's tale came full circle in the 1970s, as the siren call of Las Vegas called once more. This time it was Andy Griffith who extended the offer, sewing Barry into the fabric of Caesar's Palace alongside the comic genius of Jerry Van Dyke. Amidst the laughs and applause, Barry made his magic, his song and dance numbers creating a fabric of joy amidst the chatter of comedy giants. And so, beneath the sparkling lights of the strip, Barry's journey continued, a testament to the lasting draw of a city where dreams were spun from threads of stardust one step at a time. Amidst the glitz of Los Angeles nightlife, Barry's star continued to rise, led by the hand of fate and the words of destiny. It was actor D. Arlen who saw his promise, paving the way for Barry's entry into the bright world of the cabaret concert theater. Here, amidst the silk curtains and the soft glow of the stage, he crossed paths with the famous Billy Barnes, a giant of composition and showmanship. With Barnes as his guide, Barry found himself pulled into the chaos of the Billy Barnes Review, a musical production that would become his artistic playground for years to come. In the company of stars like his future wife, Jackie Joseph, Barry's skills thrived, his name becoming linked with the magic of Barnes's works. Together with a group of unforgettable characters, including Joyce Jameson, Burt Convey, and Patty Regan, Barry moved across the stage, his voice mixing with theirs in a chorus of laughs and praise. As the curtain rose and fell, cast records captured their performances, each note a testament to the friendship and creativity that lived within their middle. Yet the road to fame was not without its twists and turns. In a dramatic turn of events, Barry found himself at the heart of a court battle that saw the original cast of the Broadway show changed in a flash of scandal. But even amidst the chaos, Barry's spirit stayed unfazed, his resolve unshakable as he continued to grace the stages of Los Angeles with his presence. Through it all, Barry's journey was an ode to the power of desire and determination, a bright example of what happens when ability meets chance in the city of angels. And as the curtain closed on one story, another awaited, calling Barry forward into the vast worlds of theater possibility. A Broadway Star The golden age of television brought in famous talent programs, none more recognized than Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts, a primetime extravaganza that enthralled viewers from 1946 until 1958. Among the myriad of dreamers competing for greatness, Ken Berry emerged as a blazing light of promise when he claimed victory in 1957. For Barry, success meant more than just momentary fame. It opened the doors to a week-long residence on Godfrey's acclaimed morning television program, 
a coveted platform that reached audiences far and wide via radio broadcasts. Yet, Barry's abilities were so compelling that he wasn't pleased with simply one week in the limelight. His compelling performances inspired Godfrey to extend his offer for six extra weeks, culminating to a whirlwind experience of entertainment and discovery. Venturing outside the limits of the studio, Barry joined Godfrey on remote presentations that displayed the variety of American landscapes and industry. From the busy cattle yards of Omaha to the rough landscape of a Seattle logging camp, Barry's contagious enthusiasm and flexibility attracted audiences across. His tour proceeded to the cutting-edge facilities of the Boeing Aircraft Factory, where he wowed workers with his spectacular performances and finished in the enchanted domain of the San Diego Zoo, where he delighted both human viewers and inquisitive beasts alike. Each performance was a monument to Barry's inexhaustible invention and flexibility, as he thought up new performances every day to fascinate audiences and leave a lasting impression. Whether he was crooning a melody, performing a vibrant dance routine, or delivering side-splitting humor, Barry's repertory had no limitations, confirming his image as a multidimensional performer with an indisputable aptitude for capturing hearts and minds. The Billy Barnes Review emerged as a beacon of entertainment, pulling in masses with its fascinating performances and star-studded roster. It was inside this colorful milieu that destiny intervened, organizing a momentous meeting between Ken Berry and the renowned Carol Burnett. One evening in Los Angeles, as the curtains lifted on the Billy Barnes Review, Burnett found herself in the crowd, fascinated by Berry's captivating presence on stage. Impressed by his ability and charisma, she lost no time in using her own power to earn him a guest role on The Gary Moore Show, where she was playing in New York. From that point on, Burnett became more than simply a co-worker to Barry. She became a treasured friend and mentor, seeing his potential and encouraging his career at every step. As she soared to prominence with her own program, which ultimately bloomed into the renowned The Carol Burnett Program on CBS, Barry found himself invited into her inner circle as one of her most frequent guest stars, alongside luminaries like Jim Neighbors and Steve Lawrence. Their cooperation reached new heights in 1972, when Barry and Burnett joined together in the bright color production of Burnett's Broadway blockbuster, Once Upon a Mattress, bringing their powerful chemistry and incomparable abilities to the small screen. In the ever-evolving environment of show business, Barry and Burnett's cooperation stood as a monument to the lasting strength of friendship and mutual respect. Their path from accidental acquaintance to acclaimed partnership illustrated the magic of Hollywood, where talent, opportunity, and true companionship converged to produce memorable moments of entertainment genius. Ken Berry's career, standout performances, and serendipitous encounters shaped his journey into a revered figure in the entertainment industry. One such milestone was his poignant portrayal in the 1982 television movie, Eunice a poignant adaptation of the family sketch from The Carol Burnett Show. In a departure from his comedic roots, Barry tackled the role of Philip, Eunice's brother, with depth and sincerity, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Although he initially inhabited the character of Philip, Barry's path eventually diverged to the role of Vinton on Mama's Family, a testament to his ability to breathe life into diverse characters with nuance and authenticity. Barry's enduring partnership with Carol Burnett continued to bear fruit, extending beyond the small screen to the stage with the 1993 production of From the Top in Long Beach, California. Their collaborative spirit and mutual admiration for each other's talents enriched the theatrical landscape, delighting audiences with their dynamic performances. The fateful connection forged during the Billy Barnes Review opened yet another door for Barry when he caught the eye of none other than Lucille Ball. Recognizing his potential, Ball wasted no time in inviting Barry to join her prestigious talent development program at Desilu Studios. Amidst the whirlwind of rehearsals and performances, Barry seamlessly balanced his commitments to both Ball and Barnes, 
earning accolades for his contributions to the Billy Barnes Review. The show's favorable reviews and newfound financial backing paved the way for its transition from the York Playhouse to Broadway, necessitating Barry to temporarily step away from Desilu. Upon his return from the busy streets of New York in 1960, Ken Barry found himself accepted back into the fold of Desilu Studios, starting on a new stage in his successful career. This time, he stepped into the shoes of Woody, a lovable bellhop, in 10 episodes of CBS' The Ann Southern Show, set against the background of the busy Bartley House, a New York hotel filled with colorful characters and lively adventures. Barry's portrayal of Woody brought depth and fun to the series. Serving as a Greek chorus of one, his character offered insights and comedic relief, flowing smoothly into the fabric of the show's plot. As Woody, Barry brought his signature charm and hilarious timing to each show, endearing himself to audiences with his infectious energy and lovable quirks. Whether he was managing the chaotic hallways of the hotel or sharing clever chat with the varied cast of characters, Barry's portrayal brought life into the lively world of the Ann Southern show. In the grand tradition of Daisy Lou Studios, Barry's return marked a successful reunion with the small screen, showing his range as an actor and his ability to easily assume parts that left a lasting impact on viewers. As Woody, he not only entertained viewers, but also brought depth and dimension to the beloved series, ensuring his place as a beloved figure in the world of television. In the lively world of 1960s television, Ken Berry's star continued to rise, driven by memorable guest appearances and scene-stealing performances. In 1968, the famous Lucille Ball extended a personal request for Berry to join her on The Lucy Show, where he stepped into the part of a bank client with dreams of starting a dance school. His rendition of the classic Fred Astaire song, Steppin' Out With My Baby, charmed audiences. While a delightful duet with Ball on Lucy's Back in Town, showed their undeniable chemistry and comedic ability. Prior to his time on The Lucy Show, Barry had already made his mark on the small screen with a string of memorable parts. Barry was cast as one of three comic relief characters on Dr. Kildare from 1961 to 1966. A regular on the series, Barry played Dr. Capish. He also played a dance instructor several times on The Dick Van Dyke Show. As Dr. Capish, Barry brought fun and kindness into the halls of Blair General Hospital, winning him a loyal following as a regular figure on the beloved medical drama. Meanwhile, his regular appearances as a dance teacher on The Dick Van Dyke Show added a touch of humor to the lives of Rob Petrie and his cohorts, showing Barry's flair for both physical comedy and complex characterizations. In the ever-changing world of television, Barry's efforts were nothing short of magical boosting each part with his unique mix of skill and charm. Whether he was singing out show tunes or drawing laughs with his perfect timing, Barry's presence on the small screen left a lasting mark on viewers and peers alike, solidifying his place as a beloved star of television's golden age. A TV star, Ken Barry's path through the entertainment world was a colorful event filled with humor, talent, and unexpected turns. From his modest beginnings in guest parts to his leading position in the legendary comedy F Troop, Barry's career was a roller coaster journey of hilarious highs and poignant moments. Imagine strolling into the set of F Troop, where Barry, with Forrest Tucker and Larry Storch, brought to life the fumbling but adorable Captain Parmenter. Behind the scenes, it was like a continual playground with the whole ensemble indulging in a hilarious game of attempting to outdo one other in producing laughter. Barry's ability for dancing not only thrilled spectators, but also enabled him to perform rehearsed pratfalls with elegance, whether it was over hitching posts or garbage cans. Mr. Barry said that his time on F Troop had been his most cherished, partly because it was his first starring television role and partly because he was allowed to contribute to the character's comic persona. But Barry's experiences didn't finish with the termination of F Troop. Among a stroke of serendipity, his manager Dick Linky staged a stage production based on the series, 
which found its home among the sparkling lights of Harrah's Entertainment in Reno, Nevada. Despite the show's popularity, a cloud hovered when word of F Troop's death reached them owing to financial issues. Undeterred, Barry started on a new chapter, joining the cast of The Andy Griffith Show in its last episodes and then headlining its spin-off, Mayberry RFD. His role in Sam Jones, a widower farmer, endeared him to fans, showcasing his flexibility beyond humorous antics. Together with the ensemble cast, Barry imbued the small-town charm of Mayberry with his own brand of warmth and comedy. As the curtain dropped on Mayberry RFD, during the rural purge of television programming, Barry continued to shine in other TV movies and even hosted his own summer replacement variety show, ushering future luminaries like Steve Martin and Cheryl Ladd to the limelight. One of Barry's outstanding undertakings was his involvement in Mama's Family, a spin-off from The Carol Burnett Show. Amidst a cast of comic talents, Barry brought to life the charming Vinton Harper, adding to the show's popularity during its move from network to syndication. Beyond the small screen, Barry's theatrical pursuits carried him throughout the nation, sharing the stage with giants like Donald O'Connor and Mickey Rooney. From Sugar to The Music Man, Barry's performances astonished audiences, confirming his image as a dynamic performer. Even in the field of advertisements, Barry made his impact, enchanting audiences as the ambassador for Kinney Shoes with his catchy singing and dancing. Ken Barry's path in entertainment was a monument to his lasting skill, leaving an indelible stamp on screens large and small and hearts across generations. Tragedy Strikes Ken Berry's personal life was defined by both pleasure and tragedy. He married Jackie Joseph, his co-star from the Billy Barnes Review on May 29, 1960. Their delight was laced with sadness when their son, Joseph Larson Berry, was born on November 29, 1962, only to die suddenly six days later on December 5, 1962. Despite this devastating loss, they found peace in adopting two children, John and Jennifer, together. However, as life progressed, Barry and Joseph's paths diverged, culminating in their divorce in 1976. Despite the termination of their marriage, they stayed linked via their mutual love for their children. Tragically, the family faced more loss when John, who subsequently co-founded the indie rock band Idaho, died of brain cancer in 2016 at the age of 51. The sadness intensified with Jennifer's dying in 2020, due to natural causes at the age of 55. Throughout these challenges, Barry found unshakable support and companionship in Susie Walsh, a stage manager who stuck at his side for the past 24 years. In the face of life's uncertainty, their friendship remained solid, bringing comfort and strength during both glad and trying moments. Barry's discography and net worth. Ken Berry's journey into the world of music began with his role in the cast records of the Billy Barnes shows. From the bright lights of Broadway to the busy streets of Los Angeles, Berry gave his skills to two classic records that captured the spirit of Billy Barnes's musical magic. Following a show-stopping visit on The Andy Williams Show, Berry's vocal talent caught the attention of the famous singer himself. Impressed by Berry's singing skills, Williams extended an offer for him to make a solo album on his newly formed Barnaby label. Thus, in 1970, the world was exposed to the lovely tunes of Ken Berry RFD. From toe-tapping tunes to emotional songs, Berry's musical journey on Ken Berry RFD gave a glimpse into the depth and talent of a true performer. At the time of his passing in 2018, Ken Berry left behind a history of skill and success alongside a net worth estimated at $4 million. This sum, amassed through decades of hard work and commitment to his craft, serves as a testament to Barry's great job in the entertainment industry. Retirement and the passing of a legend, Mr. Barry chose not to continue acting in his later years. I don't do anything, he said cheerfully in the 2012 interview. I go where my day takes me which he added was often to doctor's offices. Music, not acting, was his first career priority. I thought acting was something you did between numbers, he said. In a poignant farewell to a beloved entertainer, 
Ken Berry bid adieu to the world stage on December 1, 2018, in Burbank, California. His passing, attributed to complications of the heart, marked the end of a storied career that spanned decades and touched the lives of countless fans around the globe. At the age of 85, Berry's legacy as a versatile actor, accomplished singer, and cherished television icon was etched into the annals of entertainment history. As news of his passing reverberated through Hollywood and beyond, tributes poured in from colleagues, friends, and admirers, each reflecting on Barry's enduring impact on the world of entertainment. From his breakout roles on television to his memorable performances on stage and screen, Barry's talent and charm left an indelible mark on generations of audiences. In the quiet confines of Burbank, California, a chapter of entertainment history came to a close with Barry's passing. Yet, his spirit lives on in the hearts of those who were touched by his work, his laughter, and his unwavering dedication to his craft. Though he may have bid farewell to this world, Ken Barry's legacy continues to shine brightly, a testament to the timeless power of talent, perseverance, and the enduring magic of entertainment. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to your channels and check out more interesting videos before you leave. See you in the next video.